Hey, what's up coders, I'm Coderius and today another quick video about space. We will create the basic solar system and make stuff orbit each other. Physics and mathematics are complex topics, but don't worry, we'll just use easy formulas and our solar system will orbit forever. Before we start, take a moment to like and subscribe and I see you in Unity. Alright, the sun you see on the screen was made in Shadowgraph. I explained it in a previous video that you can watch here. By here I mean in the card, which should pop up in the top right corner of the screen. You can also just start an empty URP project and use a default sphere for the sun. Real sizes in space are huge, and when I mean huge, I mean astronomical. The sun could contain 1.3 million Earth in terms of volume. So to still be able to see objects, we will cheat a bit with the distances and sizes. I made a table with the sun and the planets with their respective mass in Earth mass, radius in kilometers and distance to the sun in million kilometers. Let's say our sun has a size of 696. That's actually the radius, so for the size we should double it to have the diameter. But anyway, as I mentioned, we will make some adjustments to have a nice visual. We add a rigid body with a mass of 333,000. That's the mass of the sun in Earth mass. We'll code our own gravity, so let's uncheck the use gravity checkbox. Let's add the Earth at a distance of like 1510. It's the distance in million kilometer multiplied by 10. It's not real, but at least we can build the solar system in a consistent manner. Its size will be 6.3. We add a rigid body with a mass of 1, as masses are in Earth mass, so the Earth has a mass of 1, and we disable gravity as well. Ok, we can also add a tag to our object in order to retrieve them easily in the code later on. I just called them Celestials. Then we can add our solar system management. For that we create an empty game object, let's call it Solar System, and add a script to it with the same name. Open it in Visual Studio to start editing. In many astrophysics formula we find the gravitational constant represented by the letter G. It's a constant number that was empirically calculated to make Newton and Einstein formulas work. In this example we will also adjust it to control the speed at which our space is running. The real number is very small, but we will use a value of 100 in this example, as we would need to wait a year for the Earth to make a full circle. Then we need an array to store all our celestials. In the start function, we populate our array with all celestials with the function findGameObject with tag. Ok, I told you we will use only two formulas. The first one is gravity, so let's create a void function and call it gravity. In there we will just iterate through all our objects with a double loop and apply the gravitational force as we've learned in school. The gravity force is equal to g multiplied by the product of the masses divided by their square distance. Of course, an object is not orbiting itself, so we apply gravity only if the object is not equal to itself. We get the respective masses, calculate the distance and add the force to the rigid body component in the direction of the central object. Alright, let's execute this function in the fixed update, save and see how it goes. Great, it seems to work. The Earth is falling into the gravitational field of the Sun. Now how to make these things orbit each other? I made some research and the instance orbital speed for circular orbit is the square root of the gravitational constant multiplied by the central object mass divided by the distance. That's applicable when the mass of the orbiting object is negligible like the mass of the Earth compared to the mass of the Sun. Let's create a new void function and call it initial velocity. We do the same and go through the list of celestials. We retrieve the mass of the central object, their distance, and oriented the object to face the central object. That will be easier to apply the velocity with the right vector. Actually, all objects are subject to gravity relative to their distance, and that's also true for the orbital speed. So in this case, for each object we will add velocity depending on the surrounding objects. As we are facing the central object, we can use the right vector as a direction. Then we just multiply by the formula I explained earlier. Ok, save and back to the editor to see how it looks like. Awesome, our planet is now orbiting the Sun. Ok, 
What is really cool with this formula is that if we add any object, it will start orbiting. We can add a smaller body around a planet to represent the moon, with a smaller size and smaller mass. It will start orbiting the planet. All this only with these two formulas. From there we can really build an entire solar system with more planets and make them all orbit each other. Alright, it's already the end of the video, I hope you liked it. If that's the case, thank you very much for giving a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, keep coding and see you next time.